Good morning, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the third and final day of the Africa Investment Forum, the continent's premier investment marketplace and a platform to accelerate deals to closure. You're welcome this morning. My name is Victor Oladokun, and I'll be your moderator during this morning's opening panel, Sports as a Business Catalyst. We're in for a treat, and this is the way we're going to run the panel this morning. It's actually not a panel per se, it's gonna be a conversation. Um, there's gonna be an engagement with our guests. Thereafter, we're also gonna create some time for you to ask questions if you need to. So, joining me on the panel is one of the National Basketball Association's most successful sports figures. He is the Vice Chairman and President of the Toronto Raptors and the first African to lead an NBA team to a championship title. Ladies and gentlemen, please give a warm Abidjan welcome to Masai Ujuri. Masai, it's great having you here today. Cool. Thanks for being a part of the Africa Investment Forum. And I must say, you've been consistent. You were there in 2018, 2019, and here you are in 2022 in Abidjan. This is, this is like home. Uh, when President Adesina uh, calls on me and Chinelu, I jump. <laughs> okay, you got, you got the marching orders. Yeah, I have the now, marching orders. <laughs> we're going to start on the personal and get into the more expansive details later on, but I just want to ask you a personal question. As you know, sports is a tough business, mm -hmm. and no team wins all the time. You have your defeats and you have your wins, mm -hmm. and you're personally familiar with the joys of success and the tears of defeat on a personal level. Is there any story you'd like to share with us about failure and how that set you up for success? So first I'll show them the video and then, and then I'll answer the question. Well, are they, you're our guest, let's do that. Are they ready? Yes, let's cue the first video here. Sports is a way to connect. It's a way to give young people opportunity. Uh, it's a way to build culture. It is the fans, it's the economy of it, it's the populations and how the, it's the business that uh, comes around it. It's the passion that is in everything that is around uh, uh, sport. Sport in Africa is an ecosystem, a seamless blend of passion, pride, community, and commerce that dates back to our beginnings, which shows the greatness of our future, too. Oh, lovely ball to draw. We collectively recall moments in time, memorizing the precise details of where we celebrated, played, parented, coached, watched, different cultures, voices, and languages, a continent united as one. The court that they built here would allow these kids to also dream big. Why not? They can be like them, and maybe some of them will become even bigger and better than them. Sport is a tool for empowerment, and the youth of Africa, the world's youngest continent, are shining with increased self-belief. Our investments transform generations to come, positively impacting our communities across the continent. It's not just finding the talent, you have to hone the talent, and you have to have the facilities for honing that talent. And then you have to ensure that that talent remains uh, sustainable. Building quality infrastructure where we can develop and retain all levels of talent, from grassroots to professionals, will spawn strong domestic entities like the Basketball Africa League. Stadiums, restaurants, and retail stores will bring people together creating jobs inside and outside the facilities. Marketing and merchandising opportunities will soon follow. 
the ecosystem of sport in Africa is completely interconnected. If you want your success to be sustainable, you need to be able to give back to the communities. So people will remember that if I want to be a champion, this is what I, this is all the tools I need to, 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 to have to get there. It starts with all of us, recognizing the strength and intelligence of Africa's talent and its people. Whether local or international, government or the private sector, our actions must be strategic and determined, guiding a united vision for the future. Our youth are ready to lead the way, so let's move sport forward and never look back. Africa's time is now. And that's a fantastic way to get the ball rolling. Really good job. One of the things I want to commend you about, Masai, is that you've consistently talked about sports as a business. You've been passionate about it, and you've put your money where your mouth is, and you're doing an amazing job making a difference on the continent. So, ladies and gentlemen, give Masai a round of applause here just for the work that he's consistently done in this space. I want to go back to my earlier question because many times, both in our personal lives and in business, we think the trajectory is always goes up. But the truth is, in business, in investment, and in sport, life is a series of ups and downs. So have you had any failures in your life that has actually set you up for success? You know, it's a good, great question, uh, Victor. Uh, a few years ago, we built the team uh, with the Toronto Raptors um, uh, to a level where we were getting to the Eastern Conference Finals and uh, honestly it got to a point uh, where we continued to get to that same place and it didn't, it, it, we couldn't jump. And I'll never forget um, we trying to beat LeBron and Cleveland and um, we're, we're number one in the East, we're the favorites to come out of the East, where um, we have it really rolling. We get into the playoffs and we, we meet uh, Cleveland and, um, and they just destroy us. Yeah. They cleaned your clock. Yeah, they, they, they destroy us and LeBron destroys us. And after the game, uh, the third game, we were, uh, second game, maybe our third game, we were up, they were up 3-0 in a series, best of four. I went up to my office on the 15th floor in the Scotia Bank Arena where we play. I, I saw, I, I checked my message, I checked my mes messages from my dear wife who always like tries to console um, like in those times. <laughs> but um, before I went home and it's 11, 12 at night and they send, uh, a couple people send me pictures just random people, and you're looking through your phone, they're saying, sorry, next one, blah, blah, blah. And they say, send me a picture of LeBron. They've put him on the tower um, in Toronto. They've put his frame on the picture, and they title it LeBronto. <laughs> Not Toronto. But Not Toronto, LeBronto. but LeBronto, <laughs> meaning he owns us, basically. And I swear, I sat in my office, and I swore to myself, I swore to myself as an African, as a Nigerian, that we're going to win, okay? And, and, and I will not let this continue to happen. So a really kind of like downtime and um, very, very tough time for me and, and the team. But, you know, like um, we, we jumped out of it and uh, by the grace of God, we, we, um, we, won a, uh, we won a championship. By the way, I want to say with the championship, I tell you, nobody sent me as many prayers as President Adeshina. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, know, you know you are going to win when you get like 800 texts from Africa saying that they are praying for you. And, uh, it's, it's big time, man. It's big time. And I truly appreciate that for our African friends. That I can actually attest to, but a again, I want to also ask another personal question, but let me give you this quote from Michael Jordan, the greatest basketball player ever. He once said, I've missed more than 9,000 shots in my career. I've lost almost 300 games, 26 times, 
I've been trusted to take the winning shot and I missed. I failed over and over again in my life. And that is why I succeed. Like Jordan, does the fear of failure propel you towards success? I can't fail. Yeah, there's, the failure is not an option, you know, like, yeah, this, 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 I can't. Yeah, the, and it's not me. It's not me per se. I get the opportunity, opportunity, growing up in northern Nigeria, in Zaria, northern Nigeria, till I was 19 years old. Okay, so I'm not one of those that go to America and come back and I'm talking uh, for now or talking slangs, okay? <laughs> yeah, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not one of those. I grew up in northern Nigeria, in Zaria, okay? I carry a weight for Africa, yeah? And if I'm, if I'm, in, if I'm in this position, there's no way, there's no way I can fail because I represent a whole continent. And how many times are we going to get this opportunity? Not only as, not even as black men, but as an African too, I have to pave the way. And there have to be people that come after me. So honestly, like when I look at it, I don't even think about like failure. Winning, we play sports to win. Simple, it's only one thing you do sports for. We can hold hands, hug, do whatever, sing, do Giants of Africa, come do foundation, charity, all that stuff. You play sports to win. Simple. I, I, and I, th I think that's a nice trajectory to my next question to you. Globally, the, the sports industry is a $486 billion business. The bulk of that is in the United States. Mm. What's your assessment in terms of sports as a business, which you've talked about for almost two decades in Africa. What's your assessment? Are we winning? Well, we, we, we have to make a big jump here. Now, honestly, like, that's why I'm here, and that's why I keep coming to these places, you know, like to um, overemphasize, and I do appreciate it, um, uh, President Adeshina and Chinelu and you, Victor, everybody that gives us the opportunity to come and speak, because it's time to move now. I'm telling you, sports is a recreation, no more. Yeah, it's not a recreation anymore. Sports is a business. Yeah, sports is a business. And when I look at my job and the industry that I manage, I'll give you an example. Nigeria, Kenya, South Africa, Ghana, none of those countries have an arena. Think about it. None of those countries, including South Africa, have an arena that you can come and play an NBA game, hold events, concerts, all those things that you need to keep, to use sports as an economic driver. We don't have it in those four incredible countries, yeah, leading economies in Africa and the world. We don't have a sports arena. So, hold on, so, Victor, hold on one second. I got you. <laughs> okay, I play, uh, we play our games in Scotia Bank Arena, okay? Check out the name, Scotia Bank Arena. It's a gym, it's an arena, 20,000 people, and now we have a sponsorship, a partnership with Scotia Bank, okay? We just did the deal, the naming rights of the arena to put their names. 10 year deal, 800 million. Just the name on the The naming stadium. rights only, 800 million, okay? So President Kagame just did that deal for um, Kigali Arena, we will get to that, but he just did a deal to Kigali Arena with Bank of Kigali. Okay, that's visionary to me. We need to look at sports like this. If you, if you call Scotia Bank Arena, you call our offices and you want to hold an event in Scotia Bank, you will not get a date for the next two years. Why? Concerts, hockey games, basketball games, conferences, circuses, Circus Olay, 
Uh, even my daughter goes to all like the, uh, uh, what are they called? Huh? Sex to slay. Yeah, this is, uh, they're, they're <laughs> young kids things, they go to field, money, flowing everywhere. So I'm going to give you an opportunity to segue um, to what it is that you're doing now outside of the Toronto Raptors to move the business of sports in Africa to the next level. But let me just again give you another quote since we're talking sports here. Boxing legend Muhammad Ali once said, champions aren't made in the gym. Champions are made from something they have deep on the inside of them, a desire, a dream, a vision. So the question is, what desire, dream, or vision keeps you awake, and what is it that you're doing now in Africa? Two things keep me awake. Uh, my wife and my family. <laughs> First of all, because I travel so much, you know, like, yes, they keep, they keep me awake, my beautiful kids. I, I, I love them to death. Um, I, I think the whole ecosystem of our friends and, and people around sports, um, I have a burden on me, you know, like that. I must win, okay? And I must lift this continent. And I'm telling you, like, it, 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 Victor, it's become something so personal to me that if sports doesn't grow on this continent and we don't use it, yeah, it's a, it's a fail. I don't care how much I win, it's a, it's a failure. So building arenas, I uh, brought President Kagame to the 2016 um, All-Star Game, and he sat down, told this story, he sat down there um, in the suite, and he was watching the game, and he saw the vibe, uh, Drake and Dunk Contest and all the things that were going on, and he said, um, and he put his head down, and I, I came and uh, my wife said, go check, is, is, is he sick? Because it was very cold in Toronto those couple of days. And I said, uh, Excellence, is there anything wrong? And he put his head down and he said, how much does it cost to build somewhere like this? And we started doing all the homework of it. I get, I get him all the information. A year and a half later, he has built the Kigali Arena. Yeah, okay. And now, and now, he's, re, he's redoing the Amahoro Stadium, okay? And we've done a deal um, with him uh, to develop do an urban development project around that area with a focus on sports, hospitality, culture, and community. And we have to build that ecosystem Ecosystem. I saw it happen, Victor. Our Scotia Bank Arena, 20 years ago when I worked for Toronto as a scout, there was nothing around that area. Before you know it, they build bars, they build apartments, they build shops, they build everything around it, and it all flows. People come, drink beer, have dinner, come to the game, and before you know it, Money is exchanged in every different way. It's monetized in every single way. Why don't we have that? Why don't we have that, Victor? That's, that's, that's a beautiful question. And I'm sure for our audience, you're, you're, you're burning to find out what it is that Masai is talking about. We've got a video. Um, if you could just cue that, um, we'll take a look at what Masai is up to in Kigali. And I'm going to come back with a question. And that question is, what is it that President Kagame is seeing? that other African presidents do need to see. Cue the video. Ujiri Court sits at the intersection of two beliefs. We believe in the future of Africa, and we believe that the future is African. Here in Africa's booming cities, we believe in the power of investing in the people and places that are often overlooked and undervalued. Where others see statistics, we see stories. Where others see trials, we see triumph. Where others see vacancy, we see value. We believe in the brilliance of the next generation, forged by the resilience of generations before them. 
believe that the true value of Africa lies not in the minds of its land, but in the minds of its people. We no longer need to import opportunities and export talent because the economy of the future is right here in the heart of African cities. Here, in a land of emerging economies and a growing hunger for unity, we believe in the power of creating sustainably designed, impacted-driven developments built around authenticity and connection. That is why we're building Ujiri Court. Ujiri Court is an urban development brand with a focus on community, hospitality, sports, and culture. We are leveraging Africa's booming sports economy by creating ecosystems where people can convene and compete, where they can play and stay. Ujiri Court is a place for athletes and artists and their fans, creating a dynamic, mixed-use hub of job growth and creative entrepreneurs. We are breaking ground on our first location in Kigali at the end of 2022, with plans to expand across the continent. We are looking for partners who want to build, build places that inspire the next generation of consumers and influential leaders. Build cities where everyone can thrive. Cities that have the power to change the narrative of a continent. Will you build with us? What a fantastic uh, question here. Masai, the platform, the court is yours. Uh, I, I feel so strongly about um, the impact of sports. First, a key pathway to peace. Yeah, even, if you for, even if you put money aside, there's one thing I know. We can talk finance, agriculture, real estate, anything we want to say here. If you told everybody here that Brazil was playing Nigeria, in the next building there, there'd be nobody listening to me right now. <laughs> Not one person will be sitting here. Yeah, and I think we need to take that serious. I'll give you a huge example. Um, the National Stadium in Nigeria is in the heart of Surulere, in the heart of Africa. It's in the center, actually, of Africa. Huge land, hundreds of hectares. Okay, and it has remained, I hate to say, a dump for how many years now? Okay, and we cannot develop that place where, with all the money we have in that country, and including here, yes, Ivory Coast, including Ghana, including South Africa, Kenya, I'm calling all of them out, okay, everybody out, all the distressed stadiums how we can redo this. I need investors here to think, to really think and think big and visionary how President Kagame has thought, okay? Now, the Kigali Arena is the hub of where everybody wants to host events. Now, the Dakar Arena and the Dakar Stadium are places where everybody wants to host. Mini Olympics is going there, uh, Bar League, uh, African championships, everything is going to these venues. Imagine if we had all these venues. I think Patrice Musepe has an incredible plan with, Africa, with African football too in how we want to franchise, create our own leagues. Because Africa's biggest, I'm telling you, our biggest asset, biggest is its people. Look at everybody here, smart, incredible, talented. Okay, Sharon, get me those jerseys. Let me, show some, let me show you guys something. Let me illustrate this in the best possible way that I can. Okay, thank you. So I have four jerseys that I brought here. My own team, my own team. 
OG Ananobi. Christian Coloco. Precious Achua. And Pascal Siaka. Uh -huh. Four of them. I wish I could display them, okay? So I left the tag on this. $198 to buy one of these. $198 to buy one of these, okay? African players on one team, okay? Imagine how much money is being generated. I didn't bring LeBron's jersey, I didn't bring Stephen Curry's jersey. I brought the four Africans on my team, okay? And before they could even get me these jerseys, they have to continuously produce them. When I called him, I said, get me these jerseys, I need to travel with them. Ah, I don't know if we can get Pascal's, uh, making, because people are buying every single second, Victor, every single second. These are Africans. How come, how come the Manes, the Pog, all the African soccer players, all the African basketball players, how come we cannot figure out where there's a league here and this, is being sold around our own continent. Yeah, because the biggest thing, you can create leagues anywhere in the world, this continent has the most talent in the world. There's not even a question about it. I, I, I'll never forget what you said in 2018. You talked about the strength, the, the ability, the capacity, the talent that we have in Africa, and you described it. You said it was talent walking, yes. but we're not adding value we're not. to that. Speak, speak, speak to us about that. Well, I, I, I'll say it. Look at where, just think about this. Look at where African music is today. I went to my Pilates class, okay? 30 people in the class, white people, okay? They did not, nobody knew, it was a 6 a.m. class, nobody knew that I was coming to that class. It's a, it was a visiting instructor. She played Afro beats the whole time. There was not one black person in the room. Okay, just think about how abstract it is. And think about where you hear Afro beats now. Every single place. Everywhere. They are everywhere. Okay, I'm not even talking, so I'm not just talking sports. Look at the business people here. I'm talking everything. Our people are the talent, yeah, in Africa. And we are not using it well. We don't come together. You know, like, our borders should be open. We need to really think about this. Yes, we need to think about this. Yeah, every, you go to Ghana, it's one rule. You go to Kenya, it's another rule. You go to, all hindering ourselves in Africa. When are we going to learn this? When are we going to discover this? Yeah, and these presidents need to really think about this. They really need to. If you want to be visionary like a President Kagame, you have to think about that. And I'm not saying that because he's my friend, because a lot of them are my friends. No, these guys have to, Makisal took it to another level. Now everybody wants to do something in his stadium. And he builds the ecosystem around it because it's going to create millions of millions of jobs for people on the continent. It seems like what you're, what you're doing here is creating uh, or you're franchising the business of sports in different places. But, you know, I'm just a little bit curious and um, I, I'm wondering. Okay, you've got, it, you've got a jury court in Kigali that kicks off at the end of 2022. Mm -hmm. uh, Dakar, which other countries or cities do you have in, in mind? I'm sure there are many members of the audience wondering when Ujuri Court is coming to their country. Yeah, I, I, for me, we start off in, in, in Kigali and it's going to be like an incredible template and we've already started working in, uh, in Dakar just because of that ecosystem. I'm honestly like so curious on many countries in Africa, especially my country, uh, Nigeria, and my mom's country, you can call me biased all you want, Nigeria and Kenya, there's no how, no how that we should not be in the, I, I think, in the heart of the things. And the talent, I, I, I just, I, whether you think of sports, you think of food, 
you think of all the chefs now, you think of the comedians, you think of the sportsmen, you think of the business people, you think of the doctors. How many places do you go? They say Nigerian doctors, African doctors are the best, Nigerian doctors are the best in the world. The pilots, everywhere you go, how can we not use this on this continent? Um, every day it baffles me. The diaspora, the diaspora is so strong. It's so incredible how many unbelievable African people, that new people that I've even met here, that I, do, I never knew before that I've even met here, doing incredible, incredible things. When are we going to bring it like this? When? That's why I keep coming back here, Victor. I will not stop coming. You guys will say, this man, he talks too much. I'll keep talking. <laughs> I'll keep talking. So, my, my wife always says, kaka, 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 kaka. That's what she says to me. Kaka, 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 kaka. Here you go again. I'll keep talking until yeah. I'm telling you it happens in sports. Koloku. And, and it will. All of them. They and it, and it will. And I'm going to say keep on pushing. But I, I, again, I still want to ask that question again. What is it that President Kagame has seen about the power, the influence of sports, the opportunities that are there that other countries really need to begin to see? Well, he opened, he just opened his mind just a little bit more. Yeah, you just have to be a, you just have to be like a listener, you know, like you have to have the right people to me around you. And that's the problem. I said to uh, President Kagame, and I've said to many of the presidents, unfortunately, unfortunately, I want everybody to listen to this. Okay, especially, especially President Adeshina, because I think you are more, one of the most influential persons in the world. Sports just keeps getting put aside. I'll give you an example. Every minister in every country in Africa, the minister of sports is chosen last and is chosen as a favor. It's always done. Every single country you go to, the Minister of Sports knows nothing about sports. 100%. Yeah, I'm not saying anything that's, that nobody knows, but they won't say it publicly. Well, I'm saying it, okay? And I'm saying it loud and clear. Tweet it that I said it, okay? I, I'm not scared of anybody. Yes, why do you do it? Yeah, they, okay, Victor, I didn't give you Minister of Finance, okay? Because there is another person that was there. So, just go and take sports. <laughs> it's what happens, every country, every country, this, and you know what, this, I, I, don't, I don't actually mind that because even if you use sports, you take other companies, CEOs of companies, what those CEOs do is they hire the smartest people. And when this thing is entrenched in government, it's not like their passion, in my opinion. And sports is one thing where it has to be your passion. Yeah, it has to be your passion. It's not numbers. It's not the central bank or finance or agriculture or those things. This has to be your passion. You have to have experts in this business. And I'll, I'll agree with you. I think if you look at most African countries, it is very rare that you'll find a, a, a former athlete or sports person who's been successful at a global level running sports in their nations, as well as not having that ecosystem or that team that can propel the sport. But what other conditions um, do we need, really need to take care, care of in Africa to ensure that sports takes off the way that it should? Because there are gaps, it, it, and we, Victor, need to, we need to bridge them. Yeah, Victor, it's what, what are the major gaps that you see? Okay, it's, finding the right persons, yes. the right team, yes. what other conditions that we yeah have. honestly it's i pound it so much because it's the one thing that controls sports in every country the minister of sports does unfortunately yeah i can come and give you like brilliant answers and tell you we can do it this way we can do it that way we can do it this way the private sector needs to get involved yeah, government does not get involved in sports in America. The private sector, that's why I'm calling on people here, yeah, to invest, like, differently. Yeah, but until other presidents act like Kagame and you put, like, an expert as a minister of sports that sees sports that way, where you encourage youth, you see it as a business, okay? You see sports as a business. That is so important for us on this continent. We need to get that correct. 
Okay. Yeah, I want one of them outside of uh, to just hire somebody. I, I'll tell you this, Victor, I've had this job as the leader of an MBA team, okay, uh, for, I don't know, since 2010 is when I got the first job as the president of a team. I have not had one call, one call from one minister or one, let's say it's not even minister, like a sports director or anything, Masai, can I come to Toronto? I'll even put you up. I'll get you a hotel for three days, four days. Come, see how it works. See how it's run. See how it works there and learn from it. It's what we all do. It's what we all do. You think you or President Adishina or people here, you think they just sat down in their house and learned? They opened their minds. That's how you become bigger. That's how you think bigger, right? You think bigger. They never do it. They never, ever do it. It's all, let's travel to uh, Olympics, let's travel to World Cup, and let's take 800 congregation. Meanwhile, we only have, uh, um, dele athletes. sorry, delegation. Ten Meanwhile, athletes. we only have 10 athletes. <laughs> and then when you're coming back from the, you see uh, cartons of uh, uh, TVs and uh, everything that we've bought. Come on. Develop the sports for the youth. Yeah, for people, for things ahead of you. you can't, we cannot always think of us and what we are to gain now. Fantastic. Um, I, I like to say that the definition of leadership is the capacity to see the future long before it arrives and the, the ability to take a group of people with you on a journey that they otherwise would not have gone on. And you're doing a fantastic job in this regard. Let me just quickly summarize four points that you, there's a lot to unpack here. Number one, appoint a former and successful sports person as a sports minister. Number two, stop seeing sports as a recreation but as a business. Hire people who understand the whole ecosystem and the value, the value chain of sports and then bring in the private sector. So I wanna ask here, uh, Masai, We've got representatives of uh, DFIs here, development finance institutions. We've also got uh, the partners that make up the Africa Investment Forum. What would you say to them right now, aside from institutional investors or private investors, what would you say to them about developing sports or putting money into sports in significant ways, particularly considering that 70% of the African population is under the age of 30? Mm -hmm. Well, DFIs, uh, um, institutions, organizations, honestly, like we really need to think about sports and infrastructure in, our, in, in Africa because a lot of these programs concentrate on whatever they think the programming should be. And they concentrate on how many jobs and the numbers. I understand data. I understand where this is going, you know, and the reason to show numbers. But I'm appealing to DFIs and organizations and the private sectors that you cannot have numbers and programs without facilities. We're skipping, we're skipping uh, one of the spots and it's the main, the main spot that was uh, skipping. The leadership There's, and the infrastructure. Yes. Leadership and infrastructure. Can we get that first before we start going to programming, data, and putting up all the numbers that we want to put up on the screens? Can we do that, please? Yeah, it's important. How do you, uh, why do you want numbers in, in a lot of the things we do, and there are no classrooms, or there are no stadiums, or there are no places for this youth, for these kids to go play? Yeah, it's a it, problem. It, it really is a great question, and there's a saying that if you, build the, if you build it, they'll come. And I want to believe that if we build this ecosystem in Africa, we can truly transform in a very short period of time, as we've seen in Rwanda, what is feasible. Uh, we have one more um, video, piece of video here. I just want Masai to talk us through some of what's happening in Kigali so we can get a sense of what really is possible if you take the model that is developed in Rwanda. So, uh, Masai, we've got a screen right up front. You can see the video playing, and you can just talk to us about what's going on. What is it that we're seeing here from the architectural drawings that are coming up? I think we have it 
right behind us. Uh, can we put it on the screens up front, please? So if we look at this space, uh, that's the national state. You see this uh, main stadium. Um, and with Ujiri Court, we've carved out an area um, right around there. And we're trying to build this ecosystem that we told you revolves around um, culture, sports. What you see on the right there is going to be a hotel. And this is a space that used to be an Olympic um, hostel facility, which we are um, redoing. Uh, that's an outdoor uh, basketball court, but it's an event center, which will be used for trade fairs, for um, weddings, for uh, a nighttime cinema like you would, you would see. Uh, it will show you soon. So this is if there was a basketball game there, um, all kinds of events. Um, we're going to do a lot of women empowerment um, uh, events in this space and just so you know behind this is the, na is the main stadium and uh, the Kigali Arena. So on a night, a movie night, you could, have, you could see things like, um, uh, like that. Uh, the space evolves into, uh, moves into an out, outdoor five-a-side uh, pitch, which has become something that all of us want to do, is play soccer, but we can't play, we're too old to run around in a big field, so we can have youth, we can have um, company tournaments, monetize that in the best way that we can. Um, and encourage young children, playgrounds for them, uh, families to come and see. Uh, then retail. This is uh, container style retail. A lot of the containers that we're going to bring, ship uh, a lot of these materials are going to be used as shops. We're going to do uh, pop-up stores, Nike, um, and, and bring all these stores, um, even if they can't come temporary, uh, permanently, they come temporarily, which will be great. Um, incredible sports bar we're building um, to watch soccer games, basketball games, um, where people can drink, eat, have bar food, which is what I think a lot of people want. And all this is in this um, uh, big um, ecosystem that um, we're building around the arena and, and uh, the, state, the stadium. Um, that's the hotel which will have a gym and uh, incredible lounge um, that sees the whole of uh, Kigali. Um, there's going to be a space for, um, uh, for a podcast center where we're going to have like invitational um, uh, podcast hosts uh, there. Um, and as you bring it like all together, you see like the area and I just wonder why we cannot continue to like create this in a lot of distressed um, places um, that already have kind of built-in stadiums that people are not uh, paying attention to. So when you look at that, you see the stadium, you see the arena, and there's going to be a flow of people, you come and drink, is the same thing you have in LA Live with the Lakers, it's the same thing you have with Scotiabank Arena. And as you have events, concerts, people are going to come through, stay at the hotel because it's closer. Um, people are going to come and drink at the bars, people are going to come and buy shop, buy jerseys um, and merchandise. And that's our vision and I wonder why we can't have that here, why we can't have that in Lagos, why we can't have that in many cities uh, on, on the continent. And this is where we think about sports as a business. And I'm calling on investors, you know, like to think about this because this is the ecosystem and this is the vision um, where we see um, awesome. uh, Africa and sports awesome. going next. What, 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 what a what, what I like about this, Masai, is that, again, I think it speaks to the concerns of investors. It indicates the multiple revenue streams that are there, from branding to the, you know, the different facilities here. Quick question. I mean, you can respond to that if you want to, but if it's still under wraps, you know, that's, that'll be your prerogative. But on average, how much are we talking about here for um, an average Ujuri court? 
If we sell one of your shoes, maybe we can build them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, that one now you own. This one is more money now compared to the billion, billion they are talking here now. This one is, is, is small money. Now, I think a lot of the projects are going to be depending on, you know, like every community, every place we go to is different. So I think between 10 to 25 million is, is, is what we're talking about. You know, like um, our project in, in Kigali is about a $22 million project. And we think it's, it's going to be, and so it's, it's not. A, mm -hmm. It's going to have a tremendous, I mean, $22 million. Mm -hmm. But just imagine for a moment the, 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 the impact that it's going to have, mm -hmm. not just in the, in the immediate, mm -hmm. but for years to come. Yes. It's an ecosystem, and yes. ecosystems grow. Yes. So that does not seem to be a whole lot of money uh, to me. And I wish you all the very best with what you're doing. I'm just going to take about three questions from the audience um, right now. And um, if we have any questions that are investment related, either you're an investor, you're planning to also go into the business of sports, as Masai um, has been, uh, I'll take your questions. So if we could pass the um, microphone around, uh, and if there's a question that's been asked, please don't ask the same question again. Let's enrich the conversation piece today. All right, um, again, it's difficult to see anyone in the audience, but if you do have a microphone, okay, um, I see a hand up front here. If you could just pass him a microphone. Let's keep the questions uh, short and crisp. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, my name is Tembi Somabanga uh, from South Africa. I think now it's safe to say that we can call you Messiah the Messiah. Uh, <laughs> Um, look, for my side, we, we're in the business of sports and entertainment. Um, we recently founded the Africa Sports and Entertainment Summit, which is a pan-African platform for the business of sports and entertainment, which is to have this platform for people invested in it. And I think what you are explaining in the work that you're doing and in Kigali is, is something incredible. And I think in every generation, there's a leader who has the vision, and the rest of us that are sitting, whether in the investment space or governments, needs to be coordinated in the markets that we are. So I just want to uh, congratulate you and your team in the work that you're doing. And I think the opportunity, I was saying to the president earlier, that sport does not take place in the sky. Sport is on the ground, and that means infrastructure. It means an ecosystem, and it means sustainability. And while people have been gathered here talking about investments in different sectors, they must also realize that if they're building over the next 15 years, they are building for young people. Whether it's those bridges, whether it's those homes, or whether whatever programs that we're doing in the continent is focused on young people in the future. And sports as an economy can actually come and save a lot of countries that are actually not doing well by ensuring that we've got a sustainable sports economy. So we've certainly are committed in investing in real estate, Investing, investing in rights. We've, we've got a motorsport event uh, coming up in South Africa where basketball is a, is a huge sport. And it's, basketball for me also has been the one sport that connects culture, youth, and lifestyle of young people, which can assist us in growing and developing human beings. So, so my comment is more to congratulate the work that's been done and also congratulate the bank for putting sports as a key conversation and the business of sports and entertainment as far as the continent is concerned. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. We'll take another question up front. I see a hand right over here to, my, to our left. Uh, hello. Uh, my name is Obi Asika. Is this on? Can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. My name is Obi Asika. I'm from Lagos. Yes, and um, just as he was saying about sports and entertainment, we spend our lives in sports and entertainment. So one of because everything you're saying, just this week um, in Nigeria, we just got the sports industry policy passed, which is specifically about sports as a business. And what you're talking about with the arena, there is an arena coming to Lagos, hopefully another 18 months, but you know Nigeria is a big place. We need maybe six to 10. So, I mean, I hope you will come to Kigali next year with Africa Soft Power, which we're also part of. And really just to ask you, how do you think, because you're sitting here with a lot of the bankers and the money people who really do not understand this space. And 
the sports business, that $440 billion you're talking about, because you're talking basketball, soccer, which is our primary sport, is probably even more money, right? Big, bigger business. Exactly. And the merchandise, which is the product on this continent, with a billion people, average age 17, that is the money. Mm -hmm. And I, I love what you said about the domestic leagues, about the franchising, but please just keep doing what you're doing. Keep talking to these people. We're in the trenches with you. And whatever we can do, Africa Soft Power, 100%. I appreciate, I appreciate you, and, uh, and, and honest, honestly, he's, he's absolutely right, you know, like, um, basketball is, uh, I'm, I'm not here to tell anybody, like, stories, basketball is even trying to catch up with football, you know, like, on this continent, yeah, it is trying to catch up with football on this continent, think about the basketball talent, football is 50 times more, yeah, that's a fact. Yeah, that, it's a fact. You cannot go to an African championship now in football guaranteed that you are going to win it. If from any, any country can actually come and win, win it. Yeah, and that's the talent we have. As soon as, as soon as I came out of my mom's womb, football was just sitting right there. Football was sitting right there in front of me. Right there. As soon as I came out, football was there. I started going like this. And it's the same for all of us. I remember one day I was, I was with President Adeshina in South Africa. We sat down in his room and we started talking about football from the 70s up till today. Nigerian footballers from Shegu Odegbami to everybody we mentioned. Imagine. Imagine this. Imagine the talent that passed through that country, only one country. I haven't even gone to Ghana and Abedi Pele and here with Drogba and all the guys here. It's incredible. Incredible the talent we have. We have to recognize, and I'm calling on the business sector here to recognize that, to tell you guys, the private sector here, to tell you guys that you can monetize this. I'm telling you, there's plenty, plenty money to be made. I come from it, my job, every day, from food to entertainment to sport, all of it comes into one space. Why are we wasting uh, Davido, Burner Boy, Tiwa Sabe, we, they all just came to Toronto and performed. All of them at different times. They just came, I saw them, they are my friends. I know, they like, why can't we have that here? I see what Ghana does sometimes, and they create the space in Ghana where they go and uh, do this in an open field, and they have the global um, citizens at different events, uh, come to Ghana in December and all of that. But we create this temporary spaces. How can we create permanent spaces where you use ticketing, you use merchandise, you use all these places that are permanent so there's a system and so that all these artists can do tours and things that they can do and you can actually create the data that we are all like looking for and the revenue stream. It's important. Fantastic, Masai, the convergence of sports and entertainment. I'm going to take um, two more questions. Um, one from the lady to my extreme left here, and oh, sorry. the lady to my, I believe, the I, lights. I, sorry, I'm standing. I already got the mic, just oh, you, over here. She's right here. Oh, oh, right in front yes, of us. Sorry, the lights you. are in our eyes. Apologies. Okay. No. Please, please take the floor. Yes, Go thank like you. this. <laughs> it's so, amazing. You go like this, you can see everything. <laughs> Uh, my name is Anne Biso. I'm with uh, USAID. I'm working in how to work with the private sector to advance development objectives. And sports is a topic that does come up, but we never really have an idea on how to explore it. We have development experts that work in health, agriculture, um, finance, but sports is not a topic that we really tap into. So my question would be, Earlier, it was mentioned that 70% of the continent's population will be under 30. We all know, it's, mention, it's been mentioned earlier, that African um, youth is talented. 
whether it's soccer, whether it's basketball, and we export that talent a lot. We have success stories overseas. We have a great Cameroonian player on one of the jerseys that you presented. We have Burna Boy selling out Madison Square Garden. How do you suggest that we go about further nurturing that talent on the continent, but suggesting actionable steps for that private sector to monetize it? Because I heard a lot about there's talent, let's monetize it, but a lot of people are not experts in that field. They don't understand that field. So what concrete steps could you suggest that we go about starting that process? Thank you. Can I queue up that video? This is gonna answer a little bit of the question on what I'm doing, uh, what we're doing next. And you can see, just pay attention to this just for uh, two minutes. So can you play that video for me, please? It would be unbelievable to bring everybody to one country where they can share their values, their culture, their talent, all in one place. There's something visionary and powerful about this country. We have people in position, we have the resources, we have youth. The population of youth on the continent that's incredible. Time to be proud of who we are. Borders are opening. chance to contribute and make a difference in many ways and listen it could be basketball it could be basketball right but it could be something else also when the festival takes place i'm going to lead a series of round tables one-on-one -on -one conversations with some of the world's top thought leaders in the dream big leader conversation For me, I want to be a part of the positive narrative of Rwanda, where people are just seeing what we've got to show the world and to just get the world to celebrate our culture. So to answer your question, next summer, um, uh, all we can do individually or as organizations is teach the youth, you know, like even more. Um, I say it that um, we have to educate uh, the youth uh, even more because um, we as 50-year-olds, 60-year-olds, 70-year-olds are not going to change much of how we um, think, but this youth in Africa, um, we have to move them. Yeah, so whatever you are doing, even as private sectors, I think have the youth involved yeah i'd love to see a few more youth involved i saw a lot of them you know like working in this i was very happy a lot of them came up to uh, to me working in this conference yeah everything we do we have to lift up um, the youth and that's what we're doing in that uh, in the festival next year i'm inviting all of you August 13th, 13th to the 19th, is going to be incredible. It's what we celebrate, culture, um, food, sports, community, everything brought together. And we traveling around the continent to all these camps and building all these courts, we're now bringing it to one place so we can all celebrate, teach, learn from each other. I say you have to win. I have to win. I have to win on the court, and I have to win off the court. And as we do it, we have to bring people along, and we have to bring youth along. It's important. Thank you very much, Masai. Can you give Masai a round of applause there? Um,
Again, we live in a global village, and Dr. Adishne constantly speaks about the Boabab effect, and that is the consolidation of all of our technical human and financial resources to create the Africa that we do want. It really has been a fantastic privilege having Masai Ujuri, the Vice Chairman and President of the Toronto Raptors with us today. Again, give him a warm round of applause for the work that he's doing, for the difference that he is making on our continent in very, very creative ways. After listening to Masai this morning, there's just probably three takeaways for us. Number one, sports is a business. We just need to really change our perspective and change the paradigm in order to create a new ecosystem. But I think on a personal level, I'd like to share this with us. Just, you've been extremely inspirational for us uh, today, but as you, uh, as you spoke, this came to mind, and that is the only person who can tell you you can't win is you. And guess what? You don't have to listen. Regardless of the challenges and the ups and downs of life and business, all you need is a winning attitude and a can-do spirit. You have what it takes. Masai Ujuri, it's been a wonderful pleasure, and we wish you all the very best with the Ujuri Courts and your enterprise. Thank you for representing Africa well. So proud of you. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank, Thank you. you very much for being a wonderful audience. It's been a pleasure this morning. Behind every great man, there's a saying that there also is a great woman, and she is in the audience. Ramatu, thank you for all that you do to make Masai who he is. Thank you. Thank you.